مولايا صلي وسلم دائما ابدا ذلك يا ايها الذين امنوا خذوا حذركم فانفروا ثبات او انفروا جميعا O you who believe, be on your guard, and march in groups, or march all together. Um. وَإِنَّ مِنْكُمْ لَمَنْ لَيُبَطِّئَنَّ وَإِنَّ مِنْكُمْ لَمَنْ لَيُبَطِّئَنَّ فَإِنْ أَصَابَتْكُمْ مُصِيبَةٌ قَالَ قَدْ أَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيَّ إِذْ لَمْ أَكُمْ مَعَهُمْ شَهِيدًا Among you there is one who shall invariably fall back. Then, if some calamity befalls you, he would say, Allah has shown his favor to me, as I was not present with them. وَلَئِنْ أَصَابَكُمْ فَضْلٌ مِّنَ اللَّهِ لَيَقُولَنَّ كَأَنْ لَمْ تَكُمْ بَيْنَكُمْ وَبَيْنَهُ مَوَدَّةٌ يَا لَيْتَنِي كُنْتُ مَعَهُمْ يا ليتني كنت معهم فافوز فوزا عظيما and if some bounty comes to you from allah he will certainly say come underscore as if there was no friendship between you and him underscore o oh, would that i had been with them then i would have secured a handsome gain فليقاتل في سبيل الله الذين يشرون الحياة الدنيا بالآخرة ومن يقاتل في سبيل الله فيقتل أو يغلب فسوف نؤتيه أجرا عظيما So, those who sell the worldly life for the hereafter should fight in the way of Allah. Whoever fights in the way of Allah, then gets killed or prevails. We shall give a great reward to him. So 71 to 74 are the verses which are encouraging Muslims to get into the battlefield. Those, Ya yuladzina amanu, khuzu hizrakum, fanifiru sabatum, awin furu jamia. That when you go for the expedition and fight, make sure yourself and the guard and march in groups and march all together, whichever way is in the situation, as we know, this is a strategy to be taught how to go into engage in your battlefield in the jihad. Qital fi sabilillah. Wa in minkum lami yubitan yubitta anna fa in asabakum musibatun qala qad an am Allahu alayya izlam akun maahum shahida. And among you are the ones who shall invariably fall back. Fall back. Then, if some calamity befalls you, he would say, Allah has shown His favor to me as I was not present with them. This is the thought of hypocrites. When somebody, when the companion, some of them was injured or got killed or something happened to them, and those who did not join them, they would say this kind of words that, okay, a lucky eyes got saved. Actually, that's not true. Uh, Allah is saying that. وَلَيْنْ أَصَابَكُمْ فَضْلٌ مِّنَ اللَّهِ لَيَقُولَنَّا كَانَ لَمْ تَكُنْ بَيْنَكُمْ وَبَيْنَهُمْ وَدَّةٌ يَا لَيْتَنِي كُنْتُمْ مَعَهُمْ فَأَفُوزَ فَوْزًا عَظِيمًا and if some bounty, like if, you, they, if they win the battle, uh, come to you from Allah, He will certainly say, if there were, was no friendship between you and Him, or would, that I would have been with them, then I would be secured to some handsome game. So this is the thought of hypocrite. In other words, we are talking about all, all along since we're 60 onwards, is about the hypocrites and their way of thinking and their thoughts process. And this is what is being told. فَلْيُقَاتِلْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ So fight in the worldly life for those, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So those who shall the worldly life for the, the hereafter should fight in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whosoever fight in the way of Allah, then get killed or prevail. We shall give them reward. This is the promise of those who are alive and who did get killed in the battlefield. Allah saying both of them will be getting a reward, an enormous reward. And this is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that do not pay attention to the hypocrites and do not let the satanic thoughts come into your mind. Those who live and die is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
There's one question somebody mentioned, very interesting thought, that some people often fear death. And this is what takes the fear of death away from a believer, is that if you think about, if you think about, everybody has to die someday, now, later, whenever. Uh, but one of the things to be very happy about is that if we die as a believer, who are we going to meet? We will meet Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We will meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We will meet our beloved parents or the loved ones who have already passed away. So this should not be a fear. This fear of dying should be away from Muslims, whether we live or die. We do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Prophet says, and we have read in the other chapter, inna salati wa nusuki wa mahyaya wa mamati lillahi rabbil alameen. Indeed, my, uh, uh, salat, my salah, my prayer, all act of worship, my sacrifice, the slaughtering which we do in the Eid and other times for the charity to feed poor and hungry and destitute. And my living, my dying, is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Lord of all the world. So if once a Muslim have this kind of a conviction and belief, so when they are called for the cause of Allah, they should not fear. Because if we die, there are 40 grade of martyrdom, you know, people who die drowning in ocean, also martyr. People who die with the wall falling on them is a martyr. People who die with the injury or some kind of a uh, calamity fell upon them while they're going out to make living for their family is a martyr. There is a martyr of Sharai, there is a martyr of Hukmi. Sharai is the one who fight in the battlefield and died. And those who are doing a man going out to make living for his family and he dies in the in the path or the student who has gone for the study and education seeking knowledge died is a martyr there are 40 grades of martyrdom as i just mentioned anybody who died with the internal body sickness such as abdominal problems or the chest problem thoracic cavity problems or lung disease or fever they are martyrs Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward them as a martyr, but as long as a person has a faith and belief. So when we are dying, we should think we will be meeting Rasulullah. We cannot meet Prophet unless we die. We cannot meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unless we die, because angels take our soul to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then we will be meeting our parents waiting for us, our forefathers who have passed away, relatives, they are looking and they come to greet us. And this is our faith. So death is a transition from one world to another one. So this is what was the promise. But a hypocrite is going to be a loser because that person never believed in Allah or his messenger truly from their heart. Listen to the verse number 75. وَمَا لَكُمْ لَا تُقَاتِلُونَ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ وَالْمُسْتَضْعَفِينَ مِنَ الرِّجَالِ وَالنِّسَاءِ وَالْوِلْدَانِ الَّذِينَ يَقُولُونَ الَّذِينَ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا أَخْرِجْنَا مِنْ هَذِهِ الْقَرْيَةِ الظَّالِمِ أَهْلُهَا وَاجْعَلْ لَنَا وَجَعَلْ لَنَا مِنْ لَدُنْكَ وَلِيًّا وَجَعَلْ لَنَا مِنْ لَدُنْكَ نَصْرًا what has happened to you that you do not fight in the way of Allah, and for the oppressed among men, women and children who say, Our Lord, take us out from this town whose people are cruel, and make for us a supporter from your own, and make for us a helper from your own. <laughs> The believers fight in the way of Allah, and the disbelievers fight in the way of Taggart. So, fight the friends of Satan. No doubt, the guile of Satan is feeble. So verse number 75 and 76, this is encouraging Muslims to go and fight for the cause of Allah and why people are not struggling and striving and fighting in the path of Allah to save the poor, needy, destitute women and children who are not being able to protect from the oppressor. And now we can translate it into multiple ways, but this is particularly in reference to the war fighting to save the nation. As Muslims went to Spain and freed the people of Spain from the oppressor king, and they were there for 700 years, ruled it. In Indian subcontinent, the King Dahir was the one who was the oppressor, and he 
um, hijacked a ship, a trading ship of Muslims, and uh, women were being oppressed or being hurt, and they called for help. Some Muslim went there. So there were many places where Muslims were asked to come and help them, and they did. Now the history has been distorted. Now today what we can do in our situation, we can do jihad as a struggle and fight. This is really, really this is word in, involved with the fighting because qital is word used here. Now, and generally speaking, a Muslim is supposed to fight for, against hunger, against uh, people's uh, suffering, uh, helping people with the uh, needs, taking them out of trouble, calamity, whatever, natural or physical, sick people. This is also jihad. That is a bigger jihad, that when we spend in the path of Allah to save the poor and needy and sick and destitute, and again, qital is for the men who are able-bodied men who can go join the Muslim army. Today, we do not find any Muslim army where we can join because we are being so divided with the good, successful strategy of the Western dominance. They broke down Muslim nations into 22 Arab countries and Indian subcontinent further divided. As you know, all the nations are broken down and they left the disputed territory like between subcontinent is Kashmir and uh, in uh, Middle East, Israel and Palestine and in other Indonesia and other countries, wherever they were, when they left, they left there. And also there's a Kuwait, there's a disputed territory which was, which was supposed to be part of Iraq. Uh, anyhow, the, my point here is is that uh, today we do not, as a Muslim, have a place to go. And joining something like Daesh and other things, they are really not representative of a Muslim nation. They are basically a, a setup from the other nations, which I don't want to go into details. If you go and search for it, who invented those groups, you will find out. Bottom line is, as a Muslim, we should help the poor, and we can do this level of jihad. We can invite people of these nations or any other nations who are not in Islam to be a Muslim and to be saved from a hellfire because this country allows us to live in and be in the peace and this is the best reward we can give them so there are two aspects of it which I see one is to fight in the path of Allah when there is this Muslim state which is no more now and also the second thing that we can do is that physically we can spend our money our time and our energy and efforts to save the sick and needy and poor and have those things orphan and all that so this is what we can do next verse is 77 listen to that أَلَمْ تَرَ إِلَى الَّذِينَ قِيلَ لَهُمْ كُفُّوا أَيْدِيَكُمْ وَأَقِيمُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَآتُوا الزَّكَاةَ فَلَمَّا كُتِبَ عَلَيْهِمُ الْقِتَالُ إِذَا فَرِيقٌ مِنْهُمْ يَخْشَوْنَ النَّاسَ يَخْشَوْنَ النَّاسَ كَخَشْيَةِ اللَّهِ أَوْ أَشَدَّ خَشْيَةً وَقَالُوا رَبَّنَا لِمَ كَتَبْتَ عَلَيْنَا الْقِتَالَ لَوْلَا أَخْرَتَنَا إِلَى أَجَلٍ قَرِيبٍ قُلْ مَتَاعُ الدُّنْيَا قَلِيلٌ وَالْآخِرَةُ خَيْرٌ لِمَنِ اتَّقَى وَلَا تُظْلَمُونَ فَتِيلٌ have you not seen those to whom it was said, Hold your hands, from fighting, and be steadfast in Salah and pay Zakah? However, when fighting is enjoined upon them, then surprisingly, a group from them starts fearing people, as one would fear Allah, or fearing even more. They say, Our Lord, why have you enjoined fighting upon us? Would you have not spared us for a little more time? Say, the enjoyment of the world is but a little, and the hereafter is far better for the one who fears Allah, and you shall not be wronged, even to the measure of a fiber. <laughs> Wherever you will be, death will overtake you, even though you are in fortified castles. If some good comes to them, they say, this is from Allah. 
But if some evil visits them, they say, this is from you. Say, all is from Allah. So, what is wrong with these people? They do not seem to understand anything. What? Whatever good comes to you, it is from Allah. And whatever evil visits you, it comes from your own selves. We have sent you to be a messenger for the people. Allah is enough to be a witness. So verse 77, 78 and 79 is talking about the people when they are hypocrites, what they are thinking, what they process it. So Allah is telling us just fear nothing but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not the people. And then also there's no escape from death. Nowhere, nowhere, matter wherever we are, it will come to get us. And that's where we are also reminded that whatever good and bad comes to us is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But bad comes because we earn it. Allah is good, Allah wants to be good, Allah is going to be good, and Allah is always good. Um, verse number 80 onwards. Whoever obeys the messenger obeys Allah, and whoever turns away, then, we did not send you to stand guard over them. They say, Obedience, we observe. But when they go away from you, a group of them conspires at night contrary to what they say. Allah records what they conspire. So ignore them and put your trust in Allah. Allah is enough to trust in. So these are the verses are revealed in the reference of these people who are hypocrites. What happened was that in the battle of Ahad when Prophet was going with about thousand men, 300 of them destroyed. Uh, separated and they said because Prophet did not listen to us Abdullah bin Ubay bin Salul was their chief and he said because Prophet have not agreed with my opinion even though Prophets and his opinion were same that is stay in Medina and defend it and the young people who were not part of the Battle of Badr they were more excited and they kind of keep insisting that we should go out and fight so this is where when he left when the, when the 300 people separated so these people who are left with the Prophet, they said, some of them said, no, we should let them go. And the other one was saying that we should fight and we should also take care of them. So all these kind of disputes were going on. These revelations were given about those who are hypocrites, who are apparently are just saying whatever they want to do. And they always love to follow their desires. And this is where, which is being referred to that. Uh, no matter what a person who is obedient to prophet in fact is the obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala obedience to prophet is the obedience to Allah if whoever turns away we have not made you a guardian a guard over every one of those believers who say they are Muslim among them they will be real believer they will be hypocrites now the companions among hypocrites were supposed to be ended but there's a hypocritic thought those who are in their beliefs and values they always wanted the good good and when there some hardship comes to them they said no 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 that's not for me so this is where we have to understand faith required sacrifice devotion um, consistency in the belief and practices anything which I like is not above what Allah and his messenger likes this is where the belief comes in so and they say obedience we observe but when they go away from you 
a group of them conspires. You see, we often find people when you leave the gathering, they start talking behind you. That is a Hippocratic belief because you don't say what you have so that you could be clarified in your opinion so or, or thoughts. So contrary to that, what they say, Allah records what they conspire. This was the time that the hypocrites were there, and now we do not believe that everybody is hypocrite unless the person behaves themselves. But we are not supposed to judge them, and we are also not supposed to fight with them. That's one thing very important, because Prophet did not fight the hypocrites. This is something very, very important to understand.